For this video, what I want to do is look at the question, how long does it take an investment to double if it is compounded at 12% in the following ways? I did include the compound interest formula, just in case you've forgotten it. It is A equals P times 1 plus R divided by N to the NT, where A represents the ending amount, P is the principal or the starting amount, R is the rate as a decimal, T is our time in years, and N is the number of times that it is compounded per year. I also have an example down here where it's compounded continuously, and the formula for compounding continuously is A equals P times E to the RT, where E is Euler's number, and it's just a button in your calculator that you would push. Okay, um, so let's go ahead and get started with this. Uh, the first thing that I want to look at is because of the fact that we're looking for it to double, it doesn't matter what amount you start with. If you start with $500 or if you start with $5,000 or if you start with $10,000 or $20,000, it's going to take the same amount of time to double regardless of what you started with. So essentially what we're going to be doing is we're going to be solving for this part right here. And to do this, I would divide by P. And so we're looking at the ratio of A divided by P is equal to 2. So we're going to set all of these up in the same way, where the ratio of A divided by P is 2. So we would say that 2 is equal to 1 plus our rate as a decimal. So 12% as a decimal would be 0.12 divided by N where n represents the number of times per year. So monthly, that means that n is going to be 12 because there are 12 months in a year. So we would do 1 plus 0.12 divided by 12. To the n, again, n is 12 times the time. Well, that's what we're looking for. We're solving for t. Okay. Um, I'm going to go ahead and simplify this part inside here. And when I do that, I end up with 1 plus 0 0.01. So this part right here becomes 0 0.01. So I have 1.01. And you don't have to simplify this. You could leave it as the expression. You'll get the same answer. It's just a matter of whatever is easier for you um, to the 12t power. Since our variable that we are solving for is in the exponent. What we have to do is we have to use the inverse of exponents, which is logarithms. And you have a choice. You can either use LOG logarithms or LN for natural logarithms. Both will give you the same answer. When I plug it into the calculator for this one, I will show you that using LN versus LOG will give you the same answer. It's just a matter of preference. I personally use LN just because it's one less letter to write, and that's the only reason I do that. Um, so I'm just going to add logarithms to both sides. Okay, or you could have at this step set it up as log of 2 is equal to log of 1.01 to the 12t, and a lot of teachers prefer this or just teach this method. Um, the only reason, like I said, that I do ln is just because it's one less letter to write over and over again, which saves you a little bit of time. So for me, it's always what's a little bit less work. All right, so our next step would be to move our exponent out in front. So we would have natural log 2 is equal to 12t, natural log 1.01. Okay. And then our final step to get t by itself is to divide by everything that is not t. So we would divide both sides by 12, natural log 1.01, .01 because that would cancel out and this would cancel out. Um, now, this is where different textbooks will have different expectations. For some textbooks, they will say, um, leave it as an exact answer. So if you are asked to leave it as an exact answer, this right here is considered the exact answer. Leaving it in terms of logarithms is the exact answer. Most likely, though, they're going to want an approximate, and they will tell you how many places to um, go to. So you do want to make sure that you are careful when you're plugging this into your calculator. 
And any time that you have a group or an operation inside of a numerator or a denominator, you want to make sure that you plug that whole thing into parentheses. You also want to be careful about making sure you close parentheses with the logarithms because they always open them for you. So I'm just going to show you on this one how to plug it into your calculator. On the next one, um, I will just give you the answers. You don't have to see me plug it in again. So with this one, I am just using an online calculator. You would find your natural log button on your calculator. And then we would just type it in. So we had natural log two. We would end our parentheses. Let me go back to the main one. And then we would do divided by, and then you would type in, because of the fact that this one puts it in the numerator, um, and denominator, like it writes it as a fraction, I don't have to put the parentheses around the denominator. Now, if your calculator did not do it in this fashion, then you would have to put a parentheses before writing the 12. So it's a matter of what your calculator, um, how it sets it up. So it's kind of one of those, every calculator is different. You just kind of need to know what your calculator does. Okay, so if I plug this into my calculator, we can see that it's 0.5805. And if I hit enter, I do want to show you that had I used logarithm, L-O-G, that I would have got the exact same answer. So it doesn't matter. And if you're wondering what calculator I'm using, I am just using an online calculator called Desmos. And I just went to their scientific calculator. Um, it does matter that you do stay consistent. If you use natural log on the in the numerator, then you do have to use natural log in the denominator also. All right, so if you notice, it gives us the exact same answer. So it's just a matter of preference. Do you like natural log or do you like logarithms? All right, so going back to here, we'll write down our answer. So our time ends up being approximately 5.805 years. And I just rounded to three places because typically it's three or four decimal places depending upon your textbook. Okay, so after about 5.805 years, your amount would double at a rate of 12%. And that doesn't matter what amount you started with. All right, the only difference for compounded quarterly is how we set this up. So we would do two equals one plus the 0.12 would stay the same. The only thing that's changing is our n. For this one, our n changes. And our n for quarterly, um, is four times per year, so quarterly means four. So I would plug in a four here, and then I would put to the four T at the top. Otherwise, the work is going to look exactly the same. So again, I'm gonna go ahead and simplify this. 0.12 divided by four would give us 1.03. So even though this number is slightly larger, it's only compounded four times instead of 12 times. So it does make a difference the number of times that you compound it. So again, you can add logarithms or um, natural log, whichever one you prefer to your uh, work in order to get rid of the, or in order to solve for a variable in the exponent. So then we would use our rules of exponents and logarithms um, that a power to a power you multiply. So we would bring the 4t out in front. Essentially the work is exactly the same. It's just the numbers have changed. And with T, I always put a tail on it when I'm solving for a T just because of the fact otherwise it can look like a plus sign and you can get confused as to what you are actually solving for. So since we're solving for this T right here, we would just divide both sides by the four natural log three. So I would do natural log two divided by four natural log 1.03. And again, you would just plug this into your calculator. I already did it. I'm gonna go ahead and put the answer down this ends up being 0.58624. So you can see it's not much longer, um, but it does take a little bit longer uh, for it to, when it's compounded quarterly. So it will take a little bit longer for it to double. So for the last one with comp compounded continuously, we would set it up the same thing. Again, our ratio A divided by P is going to be two. So we would just set it up that two is equal to, so for this, basically what would happen is we would wanna get the ERT by itself. Okay, um, remember that the A divided by P equals two. The ratio of the original or the ending amount divided by the starting amount is two. 
right? So then we would plug it in, r is 0.12. Our time is what we are solving for. So that's our unknown. So for this one, what we would do, anytime you have e, you always use natural log. Would you get this right thing if you used log? Yes, it's just it's easier when you have base e to use the natural logarithm, and I'll show you why in just one second. Um, we would still bring our exponent out in front. So we would have natural log 2 equals 0.12t. And what happens here is natural log e is always equal to 1. Because remember that natural log is really the same thing as log base e of e. And so if I take e to the first power, that gives me 1. And so that's why it ends up being 1. So that's why whenever you have a base e, you want to use natural log, because this is always equal to 1, which means essentially it just cancels out. So we just have 0.12t times 1, which is just 0.12t. So then if I divide both sides by 0.12, we would just do natural log 2 in our calculator divided by the rate of 0.12. This, again, would be your exact answer if they want an exact answer. But if we plug this into our calculator, we would end up with 0.57762. And because it's compounded continuously, that is the most that you can have. And so it's going to take the least amount of time in order for it to double. As always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know. If there are additional topics that you need me to cover, please let me know that as well.